Create it so you either love it or hate it, but don't just like something. And that should go for the audience. If the audience is like, that sounds nice, you fucked up. Like you're doing a really horrible job. I was like this really quiet, shy kid. And I don't think I've changed from that, really. I'm a little bit reserved with people right away, and then I'll open up, and then it's family from there on in. I was like this skateboarding kid. It was the one thing I could focus on. Schoolwork took a dive. I was always really good at school, but I like I just didn't try. I was more focused on getting out and skating. Anytime you need to just find sounds, it's always just nice to go to something like this because you can just go there with like a hammer and a drumstick and just find things that are unlike anything you would ever hear. You know, it's not your regular like kind of studio mentality. It's more of just like found objects, found sounds, and, uh, and just record them. I worked at a car wash for a couple months and then you know, like eventually was like supervisor at this stupid car wash. And then I hated that job. And then like the owner of that car wash got me this job at this office manufacturing place. And then a year later, I was like a foreman of the paint area. Like it was just all these like jobs that would be like, I don't like this job. And then they give you more money to like, just keep you there where you're going like, oh, like I could, I could live off this and like I could, marry this awesome girl that I'm hanging out with, and we can have our family and be done. Then you, you have these moments of like, I hate this fucking job. This, and I don't know if I like my life. Okay, I hate my job. What do I wanna do? I love music, I love seeing the creation of music, and it's as close to skateboarding as I could ever find. I'm Josh Gwillem, and I record music. <laughs> yeah, check this place out. This is so creepy. Should we go check this out? Ugh. Okay. So, trash. Hit it. And last one. Within my teen years, I also, I played in bands and we just like rent recording studios and, and play our crappy punk songs and record them. We go in the studio and I'm like, man, this guy knows what he's doing. Like to walk in this thing, it looks like, like it's a spaceship. You know, like you walk in, it's just, buttons and knobs and he knows what he's doing. Like we walk in there with just these songs, we play our songs and then all of a sudden it like actually sounds like us. Exactly like us, exactly how I hear it and he's nailing it. Like it's brilliant. I'm like, there's no way I can learn all that crap. That's so fucking daunting. I was apprenticing under a guy, and that's just kind of how I got into it. There was a guy in town that wanted to open up a school. I convinced him just to like, let me apprentice under him. So the deal was like, 
You don't have to pay me, ever. I'll just, I'll learn from you and just clean or like make coffee or run errands, whatever it takes. So I did that. So I, I worked nine to five with him, did this. And then from seven till 3 a.m., I worked at that paint factory and just did that and for a year. And then eventually a year later, he's like, okay, I'm hiring you on. So he hired me on for $300 a month. <laughs> so I still had to work that stupid job. But I mean, I was in my 20s. It's like, you could work 20 hours a day, it doesn't matter. super quick to me. Like everything within this, it just like made sense really quick. It was like, we'll just travel the, travel the signal flow. Voice goes into the microphone, into that cable, into the mic preamp, down there into, do you need EQ or not EQ? Keep going and then push the fader up and then go to your recording medium. And then out of your recording medium, it comes back to listen to it. So that was easy. Now you just gotta capture it properly and honestly. We'll be working on any project and like, you'll close your eyes and you'll listen to it and you'll just be like, it needs this sound, it needs something. So the big sounds never are good. It's like you could have this big, large sound and it's just, it's almost like the quiet, small sounds are the ones that you're gonna use. And it's not a thing that you can kind of create. You know, it's not like you pull from a keyboard or like, um, you, don't, you don't pull it from just like hand claps or tambourines or something like that. Like it's, there's something, so you just find it. And a lot of times you'll close your eyes and you just hear it and you just gotta create it. So you just go create it instead of worrying about it. It's crazy, Some like, if you can get the smallest sounds recorded, you can make them so large after. Like in this weird plastic thing is like, just like, the creaking of it is so weird and bizarre. Like it's almost dark and spooky. just this constant yearning to like find a different tonality or different sounds within that. There's times like I'll just, uh, I'll use these sounds for certain projects that I just find it needs that certain like uniqueness within it. But then there's projects that, you know, you're just like, you wanna capture the band in its entirety, just the band, how they sound in that room together as a unit and you don't want to mess with it. You don't want to add a bunch of stuff. A lot of times when it's a solo artist, I want to capture them in a way that feels really authentic to them and their surroundings. So I'll sometimes pull in sonics just to give it an interesting effect that has the, the sound of who they are within their area. The one nice thing, I mean, like in today's music, like everything is, like you're either recording a band or you're, you know, building music within like an array of like loops or, um, soft synths or like fake drums or just anything within a computer. But if you can build that same sort of thing, like drum loops within just found, found objects and found sounds, like it's, it just makes your track that much cooler. And I mean, it might just be like one of those things where you're just doing it just for the sake of doing it, but it does get you outside. And it does get you to kind of like understand the sonics of everything. 
like, that sounds like crap. Sorry, I gotta get that. It's the weirdest thing because like you can record 20 kick drums and they all kind of sound the same. But when you just need that like, you'll get it out of like a broken planter. Oh, nice. weird it's got like I mean it's plastic so you get that like weird plastic tone tone to it but you slow that down in audio and it it's a lot thicker so yeah I think a lot of the stuff is making sense I mean it's just like within this tune it's almost you want like a kick drum sound so I was gonna just grab some of that planter shit that we're using that that one now it'll be like our kick drum tone. I'm almost just gonna start with that just to see where that can kind of lead us. Some years back, I, I always, I loved recording bands in weird locations. Like I loved that. Like, so we'd find like an old church or like a hall or, or a house and record them in there. CBC lost a ton of funding on their like mobile recording department. So they're, getting rid of all their mobile recording trucks. I bought the Edmonton CBC Mobile, which was like a Volvo semi-truck with a recording studio on the back of it. It's a great idea until you, you like notice that like gear being pummeled down gravel roads and like in the middle of winter, like things break constantly. So I'm constantly fixing gear, making very little money and just like trying to raise a family at the time still, you know, but at that time, it's like freshly newborn, you know, wife's not working and just like, okay, it's all on you. And gear breaks and the semi breaks and the generator breaks and everything breaks. And so we made a, a good go of it for like five years. It was one of those things where it worked, like we we're paying bills, but like that was it. Like every morning you'd be out there like in the middle of winter, it would be 30 below, but you have, you have a location thing that you're recording a band at this cool hall and you have to beat them by like three hours just to start setting up. So you have to like go to your truck, warm it up for an hour before you can even move the thing and then move the thing, plug it all in, find all the power, move all the mic stands, the microphones, string up the cables, get all the drums in there, like it's torture. Awesome, but torture. And then it got to a point where we're just losing money constantly. And, and that was like, why am I doing this? And then, you know, I was probably five months overdue on like loan payments. And so the bank's coming after you. And like, I had the repo man call me and they're like, listen, you can either say where your truck is or we're gonna find it. If you don't say where it is and we find it, we're just gonna tow it right then. Or you can play ball and it'll probably buy you another month. You have these weird moments where it's like, okay, you're gonna lose everything, so fucking go get it. As far as moments of like, fuck it, I give up, that was the one where I'm done, I'm done with this. And I'm like, like I told my wife at the time, I was like, if it ever, if it ever we run into losing our house, that's when I quit. And that's when I came over to OCL. And it was like, I had like one extra job I had to get done for a, a client. It was like, I had to just record some drums and do some overdubs. So by then like the truck was gone. So I'm like, okay, we'll just run over to OCL. They, they have this neat board I wanna check out anyway. I wanna, I wanna introduce myself to Dan, just in case I ever wanna do more work. Maybe I'll just do it here. It's a great facility. Um, so I go there and I record for like two days and Dan's like, hey, would you mind doing, like I have, like I need an engineer for like four days of work. Would you mind doing that? I'm like, no problem. And it didn't stop from there. So it was like right back in it, you know, 
Like, I haven't left since. That was five years ago. Oof. So, like, sometimes you gotta listen to it backwards just to know what it's doing. Like, here, it sounds one way. That sounds completely different. For some reason, I don't know what happened this year, but like this year was like the year of like stronger intent in everything I record was just like captured in a way that is like, it's either gonna stay there or it's deleted. Like within my medium Pro Tools, like you can save everything. Like you can playlist everything and save everything. And like, I can capture like 48 microphones at once. So I can like maybe tweak it this way later down the road, let's throw that out the window and just be strong with your intent. So like a drum sound, it'll be like very minimal, like everything's minimal, but strong intent. If there's an acoustic guitar sound, like it's gotta be there for a reason or just get it out. So if it's here, like it's here for that first and then that's it, like sharp cuts, very strong intent. Whatever's up there has gotta be loud and proud. None of this like hiding stuff in the mix or like, let's layer a bunch of stuff because it's gonna like create this mood. It's like, yeah, we'll create the mood, but like, we don't, like, let's be more intentful on it. If it's there, it's gotta be strong. So through like artists like JJ Shiplett and Michael Bernard Fitzgerald, like we've been really going for that. And uh, it's proved to work. Like it just sounds amazing. You can see it's just finding the rhythm. And then I'll just get rid of the ones I hate. That's all it's doing. I, just, I don't like this one. So now it's... I'm gonna get rid of that. So that's fine. And then we can just create a loop. And within these sounds, like, because there is a loop of it, you might not use all of them. You'll just get rid of a bunch and just have it come out every now and again. But you kind of find the ones you like and then you can kind of mess with them further. Like if it's like, oh, I like that glass thing, but I don't want to use the same glass sound all the time. Well, we, we smash like three panes of glass. That's a shaker, it was recorded with the shaker. We found it in the, the bin with all the other shakers. So it's found sound, but we knew where it was. You know what, I was thinking about this like last week. I'm like, I don't have any goals. And that was like, it's kind of heavy. You know, it's like 40 now. What is my goal for the next like while? But I think right now, I, I think my biggest goal right now is like to showcase what prairie sound really is. And it sounds stupid, but like prairie sound, like it's a sound. Like there's a reason why the Northern Pikes sound like the Northern Pikes. Like if they went down to LA to record all their stuff, they would not sound like the Northern Pikes. You know, it's just, who they are. Even if this was like used as like just creating the vibe of the song, just to get the artist into like a mood, like already it's like, it creates a mood and an energy that you're like, you start playing different, you fall into the song a bit different, you understand the, the mode that you wanna go into or the mood that you wanna go into, you just kinda get in. 
And it's just these weird sonics that kind of take you out of your head about worrying about like, I have to play really well all the time or whatever your instrument is or I have to sing really well all of a sudden now there's these weird like sonic textures that just put you somewhere else all of a sudden takes you out of your head and then into like a different character and you can just create the original thing you wanted to create I mean when you write these things you're not worried about your timing and your pitch and everything else you're just like you're just taking out all the energy that's in your head and putting it onto the paper and words and making it a thing. So if you can just create a energy around the, the sonic landscape, you'll be able to just not worry about those things and go back into the original intent of the song. Like we don't ever talk about it within, within our bubble, but like truly like Winnipeg to Banff, there's a sonic texture to it. Like there's a reason why we sound the way we do. But a lot of people will try to go away from that. Like we were raised here, there's a tonality to our voice and there's, there's a way we strum a guitar and there's just the songs that we sing and the, the things we write about. It's, it's because of our surroundings. That's the best part is like, it's in you. Just let it be, you know, let it out. Be proud of it, you know, because it's gonna be something that nobody's heard. There is a sound breaking through the darkest night. Wait to the dawn. Here. 